Hello, Yoga One Awake community. Thanks for following today. I am here with Lisa Turner, our resident astrologer and yoga teacher and mom and grandma extraordinaire yeah. and really good friend <laughs> and lovely light and soul. So let's welcome Lisa. Thank you. And let's see what's going on sky high. What's going on up there? Well, today is the new moon in Pisces. It has a lot of Neptunian energy and um, it has not only the new moon in Pisces, but it has Neptune in Pisces. It has Venus in Pisces. It has a Venus too. Venus too. <laughs> so when you think of it, right, we can like, we can pull different things from it. We can pull this, this altruistic compassion and generosity and people who are very heavy with Pisces, you know, sometimes they don't have great boundaries because they're always selfless. They're, they're giving. You know, these people. yes, you see them as healers. You yes. see them as artists and poets. Um, you see this through escapism, whether it is through the art or compassion or, again, healing. Fantasy. Fantasy, like, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, for me, when I think, of, I have a Pisces rising, so I'm not really great with boundaries. I also have... <laughs> this, 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 this grand trine in water that connects with that Piscean ascendant. So, um, you know, I can find myself getting too into the flow and too giving and overdoing myself where it becomes taxing on myself because right. what do you need? Let me help you. Let me help you. Um, so I find that within myself, but one of the things that I really um, resonate with, with, the Neptunian Piscean energy is the spiritual. Well, I think that's the Neptune part. Mm -hmm. Is yes. Neptune's a pretty distant planet. So Neptune would be like, is Neptune a personal planet? No. No. Neptune's it's a, a it's a collective planet, but it's yeah. it's where we start going into that higher mind, right? Okay. The the collectiveness. Okay. Of of humanity. Um, that Piscean energy is also the 12th house. So it's things that we do hidden. It's, it's private. Um, you know, I have this, this metaphor with a seed and, you know, you see, um, you know, the little memes about a seed that needs to come undone. We come undone usually in a very private manner, right? And it's, it's through the, the undoing of the ego or the surrender of the ego that we do in that, that 12th house to connect to our, 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 our spirit. Our and that intuition. makes sense because when you say that we see Pisces in the artist, in the creative, in the daydreamer, in the giver, in the healer, like they're like not in the personal. They're yeah. not undone from their yeah. personal container to be spilling this out into the world that way. Well, is that, yeah, yeah, especially, so if you look at your natal chart and you have like that Neptune, Venus, or um, a Venus and Pisces or any type of combination, you are like, in you are the epitome of self-love and loving everyone. Yeah, because Venus is the love. <laughs> yes. Venus is yes. the love. So this, this new moon really carries that. Um, and you, when you see it in your relationships, you know, under the new moon, you know, are you, are you finding yourself really um, romantic or wanting to connect? Um, Pisces can bring up fears and phobias, right? The sense of insecurity about being vulnerable and being so open, um, you know, but, but how does that feel, you know, like I said, in your personal relationships with this, this Neptune energy? So this could actually, this new moon Saturday night is a good night for date night. I think it's a great night for date night when you're looking at romance, um, and being vulnerable, um, you know, talking about how you feel. Right in the love note. Yeah writing a love note. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, when I was teaching this week okay. and kind of bringing this astrology into my yoga practice for my students, um, I gave them 
a story about handing them seeds, right? Okay. And, and it's springtime. So yeah, it is springtime. I didn't think seeds. about that. Yeah. I didn't think about that because I, the, the thought of handing them seeds, and if someone were to hand you, you know, a grouping of seeds, you have no idea what plant, tree, flower they're meant to be. And, you know, you take the seeds, you plant them in the soil, and you wait and you, in, in essence, you surrender to the unknown, right? Which is very that 12th house. We surrender in the 12th house. We let go in the 12th house. Um, but there's also this unknown factor because it's hidden. Which brings me into Ishvara Pradhana, right? Which is students, yamas and niyamas, the last niyama, mm -hmm. spiritual devotion. Yes. Right. Yes. So each seed has the instructions of what it is meant to be. Right. Um, as do we. we. We have this dharma, this purpose, because we are here, our heart is beating. Um, and part of it's unknown to us. We make choices, we make decisions, but we also surrender to the creator mm -hmm. to, to guide us on our path. Yeah, and that act of surrender, that's the Ishva part, like the devotion part. Mm -hmm. It's like that wholehearted devotion to whatever my purpose is, I'm devoted to that and I surrender to that. Absolutely. So when you plant your seeds, well, first they're underground. Mm -hmm. We can't really see. Yep. Again, hidden. Hidden. Mm -hmm. And you don't necessarily know what they're intended to be. Right. You don't really know what their purpose is. Right. And how much of our life path, right? So in your astrology chart, um, you know, you have a north node and a south node, this karma that has kind of been overdeveloped that we're very used to. And the north node where we're meant to go, we have, you know, eclipses by transits that kind of push our fate forward, our path forward, there's a huge trust in heart. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. On a soul level, like that's a really deep soul level thought, like to take a breath with that, like how much faith and trust it takes just to stay on the rock. Yeah. Yeah. And to, and to be nudged and guided. Um, gosh, like there's so much ego fighting back. And, and then that 12th house is where we surrender the ego. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's the only way for it to flow, which is Pisces water. water Absolutely. Yes. Water to water to water your seeds. Do you see how it's yes. working together? It <laughs> connects. It <laughs> connects. Um, you know, I am not a gambler, but I would bet <laughs> that where we saw ourselves five years ago or 10 years ago is not where we thought we would be, right? We don't have that much control over our life, right? Truly, we don't. Um, and I think, you know, we talk about it in yoga, we talk about it as, t uh, as teachers getting out of our own way, right? And this, this allowing, this, this surrender, this trust, this very Neptunian Pisces moon of, you know, connecting to that that that's that in, intuition and, and our and our spiritual connection. Yeah. Yeah. The flowing of allowing, you know. And it's really such that inside job because when you think about it, um, no one else can help us. Like mm -hmm. born alone, die alone. Like this is kind of a lonely soul path. I mean, we have each other support each other, but no one else is gonna be able to do it for me. No one else is gonna be able to tell me what my seeds are, right. are intended to be. Yeah. Nobody else can release the struggling and the fighting and the battling that my ego would do until I finally crack open. Absolutely. So yeah, this is this yeah. is a really cool new moon for the spring. It, 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 it is. It's it, really it, cool. Life. It really, really is. Um, it is a beautiful reminder of you know, in astrology, as we approach the, you know, Aries and the, the new moon in Aries, which is, you know, our official new year in astrology, because yeah. everything begins in Aries and pushes through the earth. Um, it's a great time to, to look at the last 12 months over the last year and where we have been and 
honoring that time, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people are doing, especially mm -hmm. coming to the virus and everything yeah. else. And what's the number today? March 13th, mm -hmm. which is the day the governor shut down Ohio last year. So for us, really marking exactly that one year mark um, to kind of look back and see the yeah. timeline and how much has changed. Yeah, I was telling Tracy before we um, started that I was telling my students last night about my son. My son is 16 years old and he is 6'5". And he asked me the other day, if you knew that I was going to be this tall, would you have really pushed me to play basketball? Because he's obviously going to keep growing. And my response was, to me, very much in alignment with this new moon. And I said, no. I have no idea what God's intention is for you. I don't know what your seed is meant to be, what it is meant to grow into, what your instructions are. I know that I will support you and guide you in what starts to surface within your being. Yeah, yeah. You know, and as a parent, as I'm sure you are, and you, we also have this sense of trust that we have done our job <laughs> very Virgo, and now we kind of have to let go. Yeah, for sure. And I remember saying about my kids, like they're not my kids. They're God's children on loan to me. Like I have to feed them and water them and put shoes on their yes. feet and encourage their interests and, you know, kiss their boo-boos like, and be there for them. But yeah, like it's, it's like that for us people, for us it seeds. Yes. It's like that. Interesting. Yeah. Great story. When we, um, if you kind of sit and meditate on the new moon, um, Notice what fears come up as well. Okay. Because I think as when you ask someone to let go or surrender, the warriors in us, and I am, even though I have that Pisces rising and a lot of watery, I'm also a very warrior. Like asking a warrior to surrender, it doesn't, it doesn't fit well. Mm -hmm. It's it's weakness, it's defeat. Mm -hmm. And Surrendering and allowing is actually very courageous. I think it's, I think it's very I like this image from Game of Thrones, right? They were such warriors, mm -hmm. but when they knelt on one knee and like expressed devotion, there was a surrender that had so much strength yeah. and presence in it. Yeah. Yeah. And so sit with that also because you know asking someone to surrender who feels as though they are very much in control and dictate their life that's a very hard it's a hard adjustment and you know the pisces area in our chart is where we give it is where we tend to idealize or want to escape in, in, some, know, in some fashion yeah in our culture we have like all of this new age idea that we can manifest and just, you know, kind of create with our affirmations and our clear mind and see it and be it. And, and yes, but it's a partnership. And so yes. it has to be a dance where actually, I think the universe is leading the dance, right? I mean, I, I don't think I get to lead the dance as much as I'd like to. Right. I, um, yes, and you know, pretty soon I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some some dates because you know eclipses are, are starting to the energy starting to push back up, um, and I have a a New Year's ritual. Okay, and part of that New Year's ritual is kind of like we do with vision boards or affirmations and you know the things that we want to manifest or create, um, but it's also about allowing. It's trusting that what it is meant for you will find its way to you. You cannot keep anything that isn't meant for you. And you can't let go. Or you can, yes. yes, divine law. Yes, That's it. exactly. Yeah. So that is important to remember. So if you do new moon rituals or new moon journals or new moon planting of the seeds, write everything down that you would like to manifest. But then again, allow and trust that it will find its way to you if it's supposed to. When it's meant to, maybe it is going to, but it's not going to happen for another five years because you have other work to do in the meantime. Right, right. 
interesting. There were a couple things that I wanted to manifest um, before last year, like I like going back to three years and they didn't happen. And now I'm like, thank goodness they didn't happen because last year would have wiped it out, right? It's like, thank goodness. And I felt like, why isn't this happening? So it's interesting like to trust that, that there might be a big picture that's just, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, we, and of course, we know that there's that big picture. Yeah. yeah. There, yeah. There's definitely yeah. that big picture. Um, <clears throat> so put this in context with some of the eclipses. Like take us through this calendar of what is going to be bubbling up. So eclipses started um, in the Gemini Sag cycle in November of last year. And what happens is, is though your Gemini area of your life and your Sag area of your life, if you have your chart, those start to come into focus. It's the universe's way of, of God's way of saying, hey, we're going to kind of focus on these, on these areas. Um, this is where, you know, everything is raining in your chart. But when you look to see um, through degrees what's actually being hit or triggered, that is, you know, lightning hit, hitting your house where things are really pushing and manifesting. No, it's in Gemini. Yes. So you, again, are really fated through this cycle of pushing you forward. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a Saturn return point, too. Oh, that's even, that's even more. Yeah. Right. So very much about work and business <laughs> and reputation and all right, of those right. things. And for changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Not too personal. Just, yeah, I throw it Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. And it's an example. Yes. Well. So what happens is, is that, you know, astrology transits, they're not light switches. On this specific day, this thing is going to happen. And if it doesn't happen on this day, sorry, you lose out. Right, or, right. you know. You missed it. You missed it. You did it wrong. It, it doesn't work that way. So eclipses have degrees, the eclipses come, but then we have these planets in the sky that are transiting around and they're also hitting degrees in the chart. Mars is a very strong trigger of the eclipse. Why? Because Mars's job is to drive and act and push, yeah. right? Mars is like, yeah. yeah, it's our assertion. So Mars in astrology is a great trigger for the eclipses. So what I did was, because right now under this new moon, Mars is at five degrees Gemini. So it's starting to trigger the eclipse that happened um, in November of last year. So it was a lunar eclipse, November 30th at eight degrees Gemini. So Mars right now is about five degrees. And this five degree Mars is actually triggering the eclipse that is will come on May 26th of this year at five degrees Sag. So we're working with the energy of last November. Right. And then the energy what's to come. So it's an important time to kind of look to see in those areas of life what's happening. Like where have you come from? Where are you going? Yeah. There are going to be triggers. There'll be like um, activation. Activation. Great word. And it's yes. not, you're saying it's not a switch because what you're saying is it doesn't come on at 2.45 a.m. Click, mm -hmm. the lights are up. It's like through this time span, there's going to be a little active triggering of this thematic energy. Right. And then you will see how you live your life. So on a personal note, last November, um, so my Mercury is at three degrees Sag. Okay. So the November eclipse last year and the one coming up in May is triggering my Mercury. Well, in my chart, Mercury rules my home and family. And my Mercury is in the ninth house of faraway places. Well, in November, I moved far away. I moved almost an hour away from where my home is. And now with these triggers of Mars, I'm getting ready to sell my house right. and permanently move 
far away. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's that's kind of that's kind of how it it's kind of how it works. And I really want to emphasize because I listen to different astrologers, and I'm like, I have to listen to this. I have to know what's happening. And you don't really have to know. No. I mean, if you if you know, then you have insight, which can help explain and help you feel assured and confident and kind of put things in the context. But it's just, you know, life is happening. It very much is. Um, and I think that sometimes we dive too much in our charts. We want to know too much. I think we talked about this the very first yeah. episode. The very first just one. Tell me what to do. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want any risk. <laughs> Well, that is to tell me no, it's worth right. Says yes. But if you're, you know, if you're like me or ever have, you know, a, a, a strong handle on astrology, you can kind of piece together, oh, this is kind of what's starting to manifest. Um, but from a general place, you know, you're just kind of looking to see what's coming up because what's coming up now is probably what those eclipses are going to start pushing you forward on your path for you to trust and surrender going, okay, this is where I'm being guided. Um, and you can't get it wrong. And I, I say this yeah. to <clears throat> my children. I say this to everyone. You can't get it wrong. When we trust in our instructions and we trust in the divine, you can't, can't mess it up. And there's this present moment thing. Like if you are feeling that it's right right now, it's right right now. And it doesn't mean it's right right now and it's never going to change. So like five years from now, if you find yourself, oh, well, that's not right anymore. Like it's process. It is. It was right, right. It was the best decision in the moment. So it was the right decision for that moment. And we're yeah. just, it, it just, things are fluid. I have, but, a, I have um, some clients and I went through this in my, in my own life. I had Neptune hovering at my ascendant. And, you know, we have this very Neptunian chart this week and Neptune has that feeling of uncertainty, right? So if Virgo likes those straight lines and details, Neptune comes along and says, oh, I'm just going to erase a little bit over here. There's, 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 there's this uncertainty. So when Neptune kind of hovers over that ascendant, you're very almost unsure of What's your nest or what the direction is? And I remember going through that transit going, I don't know. I can't see it. I'm just going to go with it. Interesting. And, and just. Interesting. And this new moon, you can feel that way as well. That Neptune. Yeah. I don't really know, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with it. One of the things I read said that this new moon was all about dreams come true, but when you think about what a dream is, a dream is very elusive. Mm -hmm. And so a dream isn't a clear answer. Someone shouting from the sky, <laughs> you know, a dream is looked like that foggy thing. Yeah. So it's like, everything's foggy. I don't know. I'm just going to, yeah, just do. Allow. Yeah. Trust. Yeah. Surrender. <laughs> like this, we're planting your seeds. Plant your seeds. And see, water them and be curious. See, like, what, see what will manifest. Yeah. Maybe you really want an apple tree. And then you end up planting a pomegranate tree. And it's even more divine yeah. than, the, than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. You know, trust in our life's direction. And that's, again, kind of where these eclipses are. These eclipses are Mars right now is going to start triggering that eclipse degree. So okay, give us these dates. Give I think that, that could be helpful it. to see what the window is. Yeah. The window. So the window of this five degree Sag, which is happening in May 26th is the exact date. But remember, allow space um, to the eight degrees Gemini, which is what happened in November. Mars is going to start triggering that. I kind of gave you a wide range of March 5th to the 21st. Just kind of noticing what type of action, right? Mars, you're starting to take in that Gemini Sag house. Now, if you know your chart and you have planets um, in Sag or Gemini or immutable signs, because it'll be a square, um, notice what's happening. Notice where you feel like me. You know the need to act yeah, yeah, yeah. and start to do something um on the 9th 
So on June 10th, it's a solar eclipse at 19 degrees Gemini. Mars will start to trigger that eclipse right around March 30th to April 7th. So notice kind of what's happening in that 19 degrees Gemini range um, as Mars starts to trigger that eclipse degree. Um, and then we have a 23 degree Sag that happened last year, December 14th, solar eclipse. And Mars will start to trigger last year's eclipse right around April 7th through the 14th. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so what we can do, like sometimes I tell my students the difference like between stripes and plaid. So we want things to be striped. We want things to be really linear and well organized, right? Mm -hmm. So we can say this, 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 but what Lisa's describing to us is not linear. This is plaid. This is like colors coming this way and colors coming this way and not just red this way, blue this way, but there's green in there and yellow in there and they're all <laughs> kind of like, and they're woven together to create this really beautiful plaid pattern. So she's talking about the eclipses against the Mars triggers, right? And how they kind of weave together between last year and next year and now. So this whole March through April. Yeah, March through April. Is a time when Mars is just going to trigger and touch on and weave its color through this like to pattern of our And life. to be the observer, right? So Mars is in Gemini. So the mind may be going, you know, every which way. Our actions, I feel like I'm all over the place, you know, yeah, multitasking a little bit everywhere. I mean, super excited about it all, but yeah. It, exactly. We feel like we're being pulled in many directions. Um, so it's an, you know, it's an act of time. But we have these anchors, November, December, June, that are going to put it in a bigger context of where it's, we're going and what's Yeah, and it's happen. like a reflective time. Okay. You know, um, I study it, so, you know, I probably pay attention more than the average bear, you know? Um, so I, I, I have a feel for what happens in my, you know, in my own life or the people around me that I can reflect upon. If I wasn't, you know, if I didn't study to reflect on, um, you know, everyone still has an idea of kind of where life was and where they want to move forward. Yeah. You know, everybody has that. Yeah. yeah. Love it. That's helpful. So yeah, that's helpful. And the seed analogy is helpful, right? So today, you know, tonight, sit in the dark. Mm -hmm. One thing I love about the new moon is that she's dark. She's pure potential. Like I looked up in the sky, I'm like, new moon, it's almost your turn. <laughs> what is left of you? And I looked all over the sky and I couldn't even find a sliver last night. And I'm thinking it's tonight the new moon, but it's actually tonight. But like for whatever reason, maybe there was a cloud formation just blocking it. But it's like, I knew the moon was still there. And that, that, that dark moon, you know, there is a sense of uncertainty. Where is she? And can bring again fear, yeah. you know, because everything is dark. It hasn't um, light. It hasn't come to our consciousness what we're manifesting or what we're, you know, what we want to see in its fullness. Yeah, yeah. Huh. I feel like I'm enjoying that. Yeah. Wow. Look up at the sky so, tonight and see like the potential, like the nothingness, and remember that your seeds are or be a rebel. Planted. Ask somebody for seeds and, you know, and blindly play them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> write yourself a love letter. Take advantage of a little bit of Venus and um, give, you know, notice, notice, you know, notice how you interact with others. If you feel a little bit more generous or allowing or if plans change and you notice, hey, you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to go with it today. Yeah. yeah. Yesterday when I was at Heinz, I'm like, what for dinner, what for dinner, hum de dum de dum And then I saw something and I was like, this is Bill's favorite. Let me make like literally his favorite. I couldn't wait for him to come home because, you know, most nights I don't make, make dinner. I just kind of, we grill something and I chop up a salad, you know? But I'm like, I actually made a meal last night and I couldn't wait for him to come home. I'm like, I made you, yes. but I didn't say anything. I was like, this is and he's like, oh, look what you made. It's like, that's, a little sweet romance for us. Yes. It's just like I see you, I recognize you. So something really simple can just feel fun and that you know you're yeah. in another group. You got a little Venus dancing. Yes, awesome. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. 
Um, on a side note, you know, as you give, you know, notice, notice who you want to escape through a good book, a movie. Note if it's alcohol. You know, to, you know, note if it, notice if you want to go to church or chant or be alone with yourself. I was just gonna say, yeah, a long time it might be mm -hmm. wrapping and closing into your inner cocoon. Absolutely, like, yeah, a lot of different ways, depending on our signs and our planetary alignments and what's been going on in life in general. All different ways to kind of yeah take this energy and make it make it work with you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think? Are you good to go? Yeah, it was ready for a good ride. I know. I'm I know. excited. It's going to be a really good ride. The solstice coming up. I mean, the equinox coming up and everything. Really an exciting time. So happy spring. Thank you for following. Namaste, Lisa. Thank you. Namaste. Thank Bless you. us. Thank you so much. Bye. Yay. Let me find the cursor.